click the bell icon to turn on notifications. Now on this page, I really just wanted to blast through a few simple but useful formulas that you're going to use frequently. And we're going to start out with some text functions. So working from the top here, I've got some uh, text functions here, len, left, right and mid. And these functions are really useful if you ever want to clean up text, tidy up text. Maybe you have uh, maybe text strings and you want to extract certain parts out of a text string. This is the kind of thing where you would use formulas. Now, I'm going to do this on a very basic example. Now, in cell A4, I have uh, this text just here. So let's pretend that this is maybe some kind of part number or maybe an asset number, something like that. The first thing I can do here is I can find the length of this text string. So maybe I want to know how many characters are in a string in a certain cell. So for that, we use the text function called len. And you can see there, returns the number of characters in a text string. Open our bracket, we only have one argument, and that is the text. So where is the text that you want to find the length of? Well, it's in cell A4. Close the bracket, hit enter. I can see that this has 11 characters. What about if I want to extract the first three characters from this string? So maybe I need to extract the ABC part in my spreadsheet. Well, this is where I can use the left text function. And again, these are all so simple to use. Type in left, open bracket. Where is the text? Text is in cell A4. Comma, it's now saying number of characters. How many characters from the left do you want me to extract? So I want it to extract the first three characters. Close the bracket, hit enter, it's going to pull out ABC. I apologize if you can hear rain. It's just started to thunder and lightning here. So if you can hear something in the background, that is exactly what it is. <laughs> Moving on. You can probably guess what's coming. We can do exactly the same to extract characters from the right hand side this time. Again, we're going to select the text and then specify how many characters from the right we want to extract. So I want to extract the last three close the bracket, hit enter, and there we go. And you can even extract things from in the middle of a text string. So again, if we use mid, this is slightly different to the other two. We need to define where that text is, so A4. But this time we need to provide a start number. That is the next argument. So my start number, I want to extract the one, two, three part of this. So I'm going to count across one, two, three, four. The start number is number five, the fifth character. And then how many characters do I want to extract from that fifth character? Three. Close the bracket, hit enter, and it's going to extract the middle part. So you can use all of these to really pull things out of text strings, pull things out of numbers, all different kinds of things like that. And of course, these can get a lot more complex. You can use these in more complex formulas to perform more complex tasks. This is them in their most basic form. OK. Moving on, some other functions that I use all the time. We are going to combine a couple of functions here. Now, what you'll see is that I have a list of names, and these names look a little bit inconsistent, a little bit weird. So you can see the first one has some inconsistent casing happening. We have capital letters for the first word, and then what we call proper case for the second word. Adam Lacey, that looks fine. Claire Smith has some weird spaces in here, and Julie Waters also has some weird spaces and some weird capitalization. So what we can do is to use text functions to clean all of this up. And again, these are the kind of functions that you'll use all the time if you maybe clean data. If you do data downloads from other systems and the data comes in a little bit strange and all over the place, you can use text functions to help you tidy it. So let's blast through these. What do they all do? Well, the first one, proper, changes a text string into proper case. And proper case is just the first letter of each word is capitalized. So if I select the text in cell A8 and change it into proper case, it's going to look like that. Lower, as you would expect, changes everything to lower case. I'm going to select my text again. There we go. You can guess what's coming here. This is going to change everything to uppercase, close the bracket, and hit enter. 
Now, what does trim do? Well, trim will remove any weird spaces that you have in your words. So if you have weird spaces at the beginning or in the middle of your words, the trim function is going to remove all of those. So if I type in equals trim, open brackets, and then select my text, close brackets, it's going to trim those spaces. Now, we didn't actually have any in this one, but if I do it to this one down here, for example, I say trim and click A11, it's going to remove that weird spacing at the beginning. OK, now a lot of the time you'll want to combine these functions together. So sometimes I will want to maybe make text proper case and also trim any weird spaces. So again, this is where we can start combining our functions together. So let's take that as an example. I want to trim and I want to make it proper. So I'm going to type in equals. I'm going to say proper open bracket. I'm going to go straight into my trim function. Let's select the text, close bracket. Now, because I'm making both proper and trim, where I'm applying both of those to cell A8, I don't have any other arguments, but because I've opened up two brackets, I need to make sure I close off two brackets. So we need an extra bracket on the end there. Hit enter, and then if I copy that down, that should have changed everything so that it looks correct. OK, so again, another example of combining functions together. Let's do something that's kind of cool. Let's use one of the newer functions in Excel, the unique function. Now, I will say that not everybody has access to this function. If you are using um, Microsoft 365, the latest version of Excel, then you should find that you have access to the unique function. A quick way to check if you do is if you type in unique into any cell and open a bracket, if you can see all of the arguments underneath, then that means that you have access to this function within your version of Excel. If it doesn't come up with anything, then unfortunately it hasn't been released in your version just yet. But it is such a useful uh, function that I want to show you how it works, because previously this was actually quite hard to do. You can see here I have a list and these items tend to repeat themselves. So we've got London twice, we've got Paris a few times, Oslo, so on and so forth. And often you'll want to extract from a list of data just the unique values. So I don't want to show the repeats. I just want to see all of the unique values. And that used to be quite difficult, but no more because we have the unique function. And this is a simple case of opening the brackets, selecting the list, closing off the bracket, hitting enter, and it's going to produce a unique list of values. I use this all the time. It was like a godsend when they introduced this in Excel. So another really useful function for you to have in your toolkit. Let's move down and do something a little bit cool, something slightly different. How do we basically do the opposite and combine cells of words together? Now I'm going to do something a little bit different in here. What I want is I'm going to have a little drop down list, which is going to house some, some years. So I'm going to create a very quick data validation drop down list. Now this isn't really a formula, but it's always nice to show you something a little bit extra. If we go to the data tab across to data tools, I'm going to select data validation. And I'm going to create a list of values. Now, I want this drop down list. I want to be able to select different years from this list. So I'm just going to type these in. I'm going to say I want to have 2018, 2019 and 2020 in this list and click on OK. So now you see that I get a little drop down arrow, which allows me to select different years from this list. And what I want to do is basically I want to create, maybe this is going to be the title of a worksheet. So I want the title to say sales figures uh, for and then whatever year I've selected in this drop down list. So I can do that using the concat function. This is going to allow me to join text together. So if I type in concat, open my bracket. It wants to know the first piece of text. Well, the first thing I wanted to say in this heading is sales figures. So A17, comma. Now, if I just selected whatever is in this cell, B17, and close the bracket, it's going to look like that. It's going to give me sales figures 2019 without any space in the middle. Now, I want this to have sales figures uh, space dash space and then the year. So I'm going to edit my formula, 
double click or press the F2 key to edit your formula. And I'm going to add in a space in between these. So after that first comma, I'm going to say that I want to have a dash. Now I need to put this within quote marks because it is essentially text. And I want it to have a space, dash, space, quote marks, comma. So now when I hit enter, that is what it looks like. OK, and the cool thing with this is because it's referring to cell B17, if the information changes in cell B17, this title is going to update. So if I click the drop down and change it to 2018, it's going to change in my title. So this is the kind of thing you can use if you have you know, a chart which refers to different years or if you want a kind of dynamic looking title, you can use uh, data validation along with something like this concat feature to create really nice dynamic titles, okay? So concat will join together different words. And the final thing on this page, just a few very simple date and time functions. These are really straightforward. If you want today's date to be inputted into a spreadsheet, you can simply use the today function. And this is a function that has no arguments, so we just do an open and close bracket. This will give you the date today based off of your system time. And it's worth noting that this updates automatically. So if I was to open this spreadsheet tomorrow, it's going to say the 29th of July. OK, I can do the same with the time. So if I type in equals now, open and close my brackets, it's going to give me the date and the time. And again, this is dynamic. It's going to change depending on what the day is. Now, if you would rather have the date hard coded in, so you just want today's date and it never changes, then you can do that by pressing control semicolon. And that is going to hard code a date in. OK, so it depends if you want that date to change every single time you open the spreadsheet or if you just want to hard code in the date. OK, but a few little shortcuts there. So those are an, an, a whole list of different uh, formulas that I find particularly useful. Now we've got a couple of minutes left. I am quickly going to blast through the lookup just to finish with a bang and show you something a little bit more towards the intermediate end. So let's jump to our VLOOKUP spreadsheet. Now, if all of that has kind of blown your mind a little bit, if this is the first time you are using formulas, I can see how that, that might. This might seem quite complicated, but it's actually not. And I will say that VLOOKUP is one of the most useful formulas that you can learn in Excel. And a lot of people tend to shy away from it a little bit because they think it is horrendously complicated. And if you break it down, it's actually not. So what is VLOOKUP? Well, VLOOKUP is a formula that allows us to look up data in a table and return a value. So what does that look like in a real life scenario? Well, I have on the screen here a list of part numbers and I have I want to find out what the description for that part number is and what the price for that part number is. And on another worksheet called catalog, I have my parts catalog, which shows me the part numbers, the description and the price. So essentially, I'm going to use VLOOKUP. I'm going to say look up the part number in the catalog and return me the description and the price. And that is how and that is where we would use VLOOKUP, that kind of scenario. The key thing here is that for VLOOKUP to work, you have to have a piece of information that's common between these two sets of data. So you can see here I'm looking up a part number and the part numbers exist in column one over here. OK, it needs to know, it needs to have a lookup value essentially for this to work. So how would we construct our VLOOKUP formula? Well, let's type in equals. I'm going to type in VLOOKUP, open bracket. Look at the arguments below, quite a few of them for this formula, but don't fear, it's straightforward. The first argument, lookup value, what do I want to look up? I want to look up the piece of information that's common between the two tables, which is going to be the part number, cell B6. Comma moves us on to the next argument. It's saying, OK, where do you want me to look up this part number? What is the table? What's the table array? Well, I want to look it up in this catalog. So I could jump across to catalog and select the entire catalog. Now, you can probably see I'm doing this. This would be a lot easier if I named this table as a range. OK, you could do that if you wanted to. 
I'm now going to work in the formula bar because I'm now on a different worksheet. So up here, I can carry on constructing my formula, comma. It now says column index number. Now, what does that mean? Well, it's, we're going to look up the part number in this table. What number column do you want me to return? So I'm looking for the description. And the thing you have to learn, know about VLOOKUP formulas is that it basically numbers columns from left to right. So the part number column is column one, the description is column two, and the price is column three. So I want it to return whatever is in column two because I'm looking for the description. That is the column index number, comma. And the final argument, approximate match or exact match. Now remember, we're using the uh, part number as the lookup value. So do I want to exactly look up that part number? Yes, I do. So I'm looking for an exact match. So I can type in false. That is my VLOOKUP formula. Let's hit enter. There we go. It pulls back the description like so. I can then copy this formula down using my autofill handle. Now take a look. We've got an NA in here. So what I'm guessing is that this part number hasn't been found in the parts catalog. I can check that very quickly by going to the parts catalog and I'm going to do a quick find. So if I press control F, I can search for that part number, which was one, two, three, four, five. Let's say find next. It doesn't find it. So that is why I'm getting an error. That part number doesn't exist. Now let's just very quickly do this again. We're going to do the exact v, same VLOOKUP formula, but this time, instead of pulling back the description, we want to pull back the unit price. Okay. Now what I could do here is name this table, use a named range instead. That's going to make my life a lot easier. So I'm going to click in the table, press Control A to select it all, and I'm going to give this table a name. Now, a quick way of naming ranges or tables is to just click in this name box and give it a name. So I'm going to say catalog. Enter. So now that I've named it, instead of coming in and selecting the entire table, which is time consuming, I can just use the name. Now this time I want to pull back the price, so that is going to be column three. So let's construct our VLOOKUP. Open bracket. Our lookup value is the part number, comma. The table array, well, because I've created a uh, range name, I can press F3. Remember, this will show all of the ranges. I can select catalog and use that instead. That is my table, comma, column index number. Well, that's going to be three because we're looking for the unit price. And I still want to exactly match the part number in the table. So we're going to say false on the end. And there we go. It is as simple as that. And just to finish off before I let you go, I just want to very quickly do this just to show you another quick little formula, and that is error checking. So as you can see here where it says NA, that is fine, but it might be that I want to make this a little bit more obvious. Maybe I want it to say not found so that people are clear that the part hasn't been found in the table instead of just NA. What I can do is add error checking into my formula. So if I go up to the first formula here in cell C6, I'm going to edit it in the formula bar and we're going to add in a little error checking formula called if NA and open brackets. Now, the value is going to be produced by my VLOOKUP formula. So what I want to do is click on the end, press comma and tell Excel what to output if the value in the cell says NA. So whenever it comes across an error, what do we want it to say? So I want it to say not found. And because that is text, we always must put text within quote marks in our formulas. So I'm going to add not found into this formula, close the bracket and hit enter. And now when I copy this down, this new improved formula, you can see it now says not found instead of the uh, mysterious NA. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.